focus on painting. We'll use religious painting and go over some of the basic concepts of painting just before the Renaissance. Okay, so on your religious course, religious painting crash course guide, a couple things we want to look at and then apply it to these early paintings. Um, <clears throat> easiest way to probably think of it as naturalism looks natural, looks real. But it's a little better than real. There's a touch of the ideal in it. And the other thing about naturalism is it looks real. It has three dimensions. It has depth. And one of the techniques they'll use will be called shading. So that'll be naturalism. The other big way to look at art is basically uh, stylized art. It's not natural. It's abstracted in some way. It's still recognizable, but it doesn't look natural. And it's two-dimensional, and it tends to be flat. The last one we'll take a glance on today is total abstraction. That means you can't recognize anything in it. It's also called non-figural because there's no figures. It's called non-objective because you cannot see an objective type of reality. So let's take a look at some of our early paintings and apply these terms to them. Okay, this is an Egyptian work. If you look at it, it's not natural. It's stylized, abstracted, it's two-dimensional, and it's flat. Two-dimensional, it, it is tall and it's wide. It does not have that third dimension. Those are the Etruscans. Let's come back to them in a moment. Now we'll go to the Greek vases. The Greeks apparently could do amazing paintings, but we don't have any of them. They, none of them made it. So this is on your list because it has some idea of Greek painting. It's hard to see here, but let's say this one is trying for naturalism uh, to some extent. It's not as straight, flat as the Egyptians. It's trying for some sense of space. And on your list here, that's 33. Niobetes craters. So we'll give that one naturalism. Then this is a fresco from the house of Vetti. It's a Roman painting. Remember the Romans just copied the Greeks. It's hard to see here, but this is a Roman religious painting. It also does have some naturalism and some shading. Okay, now we'll go to the Alexander mosaic, which is this one here. And this is a mosaic which is glass, but it's based on a Greek painting. This has quite a bit of naturalism. That horse looks real. This shadow here, the shading, gives it a third dimension, so it's 3D naturalism, and it's an example of a Greek painting, even though it's a Roman mosaic. All right, now we'll go to the early Christian Orant fresco and the Good Shepherd, and these were both from the Catacomb of Priscilla. It's hard to see here, but there is some attempt for depth. There's some attempt for shading. He's got contraposta, so it's not totally flat like the Egyptian work, so this early Christian, and he's got a toga, really kind of goes back to almost a Greek kind of classical. Now we have a big shift to the Byzantine of the 500s. And the Byzantine manuscripts like this, now these, if you look at it, they're very flat, very stylized, two-dimensional for the most part. And this is the Byzantine art. Now, <clears throat> there is some classical aspect to this, like the toga, the goddess. But really, this kind of art here is stylized, two-dimensional Byzantine art. That leads us to um, a virgin icon. This one also is largely flat. There's some attempt at depth, but really this is about not a natural portrait, but a religious work. So it tends to be more flat, more stylized, not quite naturalistic. Also, these are two Byzantine mosaics, and they're mosaics, not paintings, but if you look at them, very, very flat. Flat, frontal, floating, not naturalistic at all. Remember, religious art isn't concerned with the natural, they're concerned with the spiritual. So their figures don't look naturalistic, they're abstracted. All right, that's total abstraction of a Jewish synagogue, and there's Nothing recognizable. That is non-figural, total abstract art expressing the beauty of the divine, not the natural world. Now we got a big shift to the medieval. And we have a couple different ones, Hiberno-Saxon. So for Hiberno-Saxon, we have three images, carpet page, and then we have St. Luke portrait, and the insipid page. The carpet page is largely abstract, interlacing, abstract beauty. Uh, you can recognize the cross, so the cross is, is natural, but really this is an abstracted 
interlaced work of the carpet page. But when we go to the St. Luke portrait page, this has more naturalism. That looks like Luke. It has some shading, some depth. It looks like it's going back to naturalism. Then the third one is the insipid page. Now we go back to abstraction and with the design, the beauty, and the abstraction. So we have three on there of Hiberno-Saxon. All right, Bayou Tapestry is a flat, two-dimensional, abstracted, not a naturalistic work of about year 1000. Now we have a big shift to the Gothic. Gothic painting is going to look like this, and we have a couple works in there. There is the dedication page, and there is the apocalypse from the, from the Moral Bible. And if you look at it, it is flat, stylized, abstracted, two-dimensional, clearly not naturalistic. Then we have another work here, the Golden Haggadah. That's a Jewish book. And again, flat, stylized, not naturalistic. And these are Gothic works, a Gothic style. Now we're going to have a big, big shift, and we'll go to Italy, to Giotto, and this is Giotto, uh, and it's called Late Gothic or Proto-Renaissance, and that's because Giotto has naturalism, and if you look here, it has some depth. Looks like it's on a stage. The figures have some weight, and it's very different from the flat Gothic style. Um, and late Gothic, it's easy to see side by side. That's Gothic, clearly stylized, clearly two-dimensional and flat. This is Giotto. See the figures have more weight, more form, and um, more naturalism. Side by side, it's easiest. Flat, some naturalism. And then with the naturalism comes emotion. The figures look like they have real weight. Okay, two techniques on here. Chiaroscuro means light dark, and let's do that one first. The dark and light makes it pop forward. Dark in the back, light in the front. That's chiaroscuro, light dark. Modeling is, look at the color here. This light green and this dark green makes it look like it has depth. This is a flat painting, but this modeling of color makes, makes it look like it has depth. That's a modeling technique. All right, and uh, we're spoiled today. We can go to the movies and get real emotion, but Giotto gives us much more emotion than the Gothic, which is kind of just phony. Last one, we'll go to the Northern uh, Renaissance. Now, we're not going to Italy. We're going to stop here. But you have the Northern Renaissance, and this is going to be a big change in art. Here's the Gothic. But when you look at the Northern Renaissance, it's not perfectly naturalistic. It's off a little bit. It still kind of looks Gothic, even with the advances, and that leads us to Northern Renaissance, the Marode Altarpiece. It's a religious work. It's got some amazing details, amazing paint, but when you look at the space, it's not naturalistic, it's not realistic. We'll have to wait for the Renaissance for that. So this is kind of a religious painting crash course. It'll take us all the way up to the 1400s, to the Northern Renaissance, and then the next video we will get 100% linear perspective and naturalism of the Italian Renaissance.